Uh, morning, everybody. Um, Jim Caravalli, Shackleton Energy. So, um, <clears throat> what I'd like to talk to you about now is the scaling of the uh, scope of the problem in terms of governance and looking out for the issues of an expanding population and an expanding economic sphere. <clears throat> for the last 50,000 years, our growth as a civilization and a species has been determined by the presence of open frontiers, both geographical, economic, social, cultural. Right now, for the last hundred years or so, it can be said that the geographic frontier has effectively been closed off since the uh, closing of the Homesteading Act in the 1930s in the US. And one might argue, potentially, that the western uh, coast of the North Americas was the final geographic frontier of this current Western economic civilization. And I use the term Western civilization loosely um, in terms of uh, that capability. Um, <clears throat> what we have is an expansion of industrialization, and that expansion of industrialization over this period, and especially over the last hundred years, has compensated for that limitation of geographic frontier. However, it might be posited that we are experiencing over these last few years the effects of those constraints on our economic system based on fiat currencies, that the uh, economic well-being of our entire ecosystem is now at the threshold of a uh, great deal of pressures. Those pressures are going to only increase coming mid-century. By mid-century, UN predicts we're going to have between 9.5 to uh, 11 billion people population, increasing to about 12 billion by end of century. And effectively, what that means is, is that power consumption of that entire population is also going to shoot up. And the resource utilization, as we go into ever more electronics, ever more sophisticated equipment, as those new markets fold and emerge uh, to compensate for that lack of geographic frontier, we're going to be under extremely uh, uh, increasing restraints on economic access to prime critical resources. More significant than that is the uh, critical question of energy on a planetary scale. So we are utilizing about 15 terawatt electric of power in our present day civilization. Those extra 3 billion people may actually promote a growth to double that power requirement. The challenge is, is that we have a severe uh, energy gap by mid to end century. If you stack up, even if you stack up all the petrochemical, the renewables, nuclear fuels, any kind of energy production capability you can imagine, stack them up end to end from a terrestrial standpoint, and we do not have enough resources within a sensible economic budget of trillions of dollars to actually meet that demand. So we have a critical problem. However, that problem can be solved if you access the absolute abundance of power that exists in space. The sun is a massive nuclear reactor that provides a steady state uh, power source that can give us a million times the power we need uh, for, for centuries, for, for millennia. The challenge is, economically, uh, space-based solar power is almost the worst proposition you can imagine. You can't do it from a terrestrial standpoint. The launch cost of uh, launching uh, hundreds of thousands of tons of infrastructure just doesn't work. But to cut a long story very short, um, <laughs> if we are able to establish access to off-world resources and propellant, and that's our business model here, we can then build those systems over the coming decades in space and serve an economy uh, and a market uh, based on, uh, on Earth. In addition, we can solve very critical planetary-wide problems that need absolute governments and responsibility of leadership beyond the current four-year political cycles. And this is critical. And those of us with the responsibility and the awareness of these issues should be driving this message forward uh, to our political and industrial leaders today. And in addition, the issues of planetary protection, which are well in vogue, uh, are also very popular. So with all of these 
opportunities, we have some severe benefits to solve the energy crisis, solve the freshwater problem because you can use that excess energy for desalinization, and solve a couple of other big problems as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>